Hello everyone, blessings in the name of the Lord. Today we will look at the message of Philadelphia, love of the brothers. Let me read from Galatians 5, verse 13 and 14. For brothers, you were called to liberty. Only do not use the liberty for an opening to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So here we listen to the great commandment that God is giving us. Even it is being summarized. It says the whole law, all of the law is fulfilled in one word, which is you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Wow, this is a daring statement that in all of our following the Lord, our journey of faith, we are called to love our brothers. We are called to love our sisters, our neighbors, as we love ourselves. And in doing so, you fulfill all the law. And it says that we are being called to liberty. We have the freedom of the sons and daughters of God. But this freedom is not to be used as a, an excuse to have whatever we like to do. But this freedom is being used to serve one another in love. So this is the call that God has for our life all of our lives, while we are living in this world, we are to love one another. And this is impossible before we love God in the first place. So let's read from 1 Peter 1, verse 22. This is the first that we will look at, that we will explore from this one first. 1 Peter 1, 22, purifying your souls in the obedience of the truth through the spirit to unfeigned love of the brothers. Love one another fervently out of a pure heart. Here we are being commanded that we are to love one another fervently out of a pure heart. This sentence is full of emphasis. We are not only just to love one another, but it's loving with fervently out of a pure heart. Now we as the body of Christ, we are being pictured as the house of God. And if you see the house of God, the tabernacle is being built by um, uh, planks of wood that is being connected to one another and they are being overlaid with gold. So those wood is representing or as a picture of us as the body of Christ. We should stand one in hand with one another and we should be put together with one another hand in hand. And when we stand together, then we make up the whole house of the Lord. Now, if we say it's a house, it's not only from one plank, but it's from uh, just a piece of wood being placed together. And you can imagine if we being placed together, holding hand in hand with each other, what happened if one of us is falling backwards? Now it will change, it will uh, influence the balance of the whole thing, if one of those wood is going down. So the same with us, when we are together as a family of Christ, together in Jesus, together in the faith. Now, if one of our brothers or sisters, they fall back, that will change the strength that we have together. 
It's the same also with our family. If one person in our family is not following the Lord fully, is falling backward, then we are not strong as one unity. There is something that needs to be repaired. So here it talks about our love of the brethren, love of the believers of Christ. We should be together. We should care for one another. That when we stand strong, we stand strong together. And coming back to 1 Peter 1 verse 22, how can we stand strong together, hand in hand together? How do we do this? Number one is purify our souls. This verse is started with purifying your souls in the obedience of the truth through the Spirit to unfeigned love of the brothers. How we can have love of the brothers and sisters in Christ? Number one, if we purify our souls. It has to come from a pure heart. The word pure, it means clean, unsoiled, innocent upright, void of evil. You can imagine if we start to try to love one another, but our heart is not clean. There is some hidden agenda. Wow, that's dangerous. Maybe the other person unsuspectingly doesn't know, but in the other person's heart, there is a hidden agenda. And God doesn't want that. God says, if you want to do this love one another, you have to do it out of a pure heart, innocent, clear from all evil, clear from all hidden agenda. We are being innocent. So that's how we should approach this that we come with a pure spirit, a pure soul. And it says, through the spirit, and this work is impossible. We cannot purify our souls without the help of the spirit. And divine work is the only work that can work inside of our soul, which is our mind, our will, and emotion. Only God can change. Only God can go deep down inside. And he says in the verses before that we have been redeemed with the precious blood of the Lamb, unblemished and spotless. Why we should purify our soul? Because we have been redeemed. You have been bought with the blood not just anyone's blood, but this blood is different because the blood of Jesus is spotless. He was sinless. Only Jesus can redeem us with that price. That's why that price is, cannot be paid with silver or gold or any amount of money. And because of that, because we have been purchased, we have been redeemed. That's why we need to purify our souls. We need to surrender. Lord, purify me. Let your spirit work deep inside. Examine me, Lord. Is there anything in my heart, in my emotion, in my desire that is still not clean? And God also remind us. Why? Because we have we have called Father in heaven, and our Father is a judge who is impartial. So one day, we all will be judged, even in the schemes of our heart, in the schemes of our mind that nobody knows about. And God will be the judge, and He will judge impartially. That means He will judge everyone according to each one's work. There is no excuse, and that should make us 
purify our soul. Number two, it says, after we purify our souls, we have to love one another. And this love is called unfeigned love of the brothers. The word unfeigned means unhypocritical, real, sincere. Now love doesn't just be on our lips. It's not only about words. Love is about our action, our behavior. Love one another fervently. That means intensely, earnestly. Now, if you come to this love of the brothers, as in 2 Peter verse 1, it says, then you already come up all the way from your faith. You start to believe in God. You need to go up from faith and then you add with virtue and virtue with knowledge. Knowledge going up again, self-control. From self-control going up again, patience and then godliness. And godliness, brotherly kindness, love of the brothers. When you do all these things, you know, Love of the brothers requires self-control. Love of the brothers requ requires patience. You know, this love of the brothers is talking about uh, brothers who come from the same womb. The word Philadelphia. So it talks about when you are coming from the same womb, womb you have the connection. You will not, just because of like and dislike, you say, you are not my brother, you are not my sister anymore. We cannot do that because we come from the same womb. We have blood connection. So that's the picture that God is giving us. When we are being called to love one another, it means we are family of God. We are in the family of God. And in order for this, we will look in the third point, which is being born again. Why and how we can love one another when we are being born again into the family of God. In verse 23, it says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the living word of God and abiding forever. When you are being born again of the seed that is imperishable, the DNA that God puts inside of us as family of God, is eternal. It's forever. And it will change your life forever. We are being welcomed into the family of God. We have one Father. And when we are being born again, we come into the family of God. How? How we can be born again? It says, through the living word of God and abiding forever. When you abide in the word, then you are staying in the family. When we are not in the word, then our minds, our souls are not in line with the word of God. Sometimes when we are not in sync with the word of God, then we can start thinking, you know, all these kinds of thoughts. It can be evil, can be, maybe it's, it's, it's not evil, but it's negative thoughts about others. But all those things in our minds, in our desire, in our emotion and will, will be put in line when we abide in the Word. 
So by doing that, we are staying in the family of God. So God wants us to have this love of the brothers because you have been redeemed by the same blood of Jesus. And I have been redeemed by the same blood of Jesus. Many times, you know, God reminds me sometimes when I'm having argument or some friction, when I would speak out words that might, you know, come out just out of emotion, God reminds me, remember, the person that you talk to, he or she is also children of God. They are also redeemed. They are already being bought with the precious, valuable blood of Christ. So don't do anything rashly. Don't you speak anything that is out of the will of God, out of something that is good. So with that understanding that our brothers and sisters, they are also being redeemed with a high price. So we should love them. We should accept them. Does it mean sometimes we don't cry? Yes. Sometimes it means it's painful. When you stay together, for instance, God wants you to be connected in the connect group connected in the community. And when you stay together, because of staying close to one another, there start to be some frictions. But when we are being told, purify your soul in order that you can love one another, what does it mean? It means that even though you get friction with one another, you should be willing to forgive. You should be willing to resolve whatever caused the conflicts. Maybe sometimes you need to hold or you need to pay the price in your heart. But in staying together, we need to be willing to forgive. We need to be willing to bear one another's weaknesses. Why? Because you are my brothers. You are my sisters. Sometimes even though it's going through tough times, but when you keep staying in the family of God, you keep staying in the word, you keep purifying your soul through the spirit. you will keep having that love of one another, which comes only from God. Only God will enable us. So I hope this message will apply to your family. You stand with your family hand in hand together, but it's not only in your family but it also in the family of God. We all stand hand in hand. Let's pray for one another. And when the other one has something that they go through, we go through with them. We pray with them. Maybe we cry in our prayers and we support them in whatever they need. And may God's love be the uniting bond in the midst of us, and we will be stronger together. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you have called us into this way of love. We are to love God and we are to love one another because when we truly love you, Lord, we will love the children of God. Help us, Lord to forgive. Help us, Lord, to pick up things again and to walk together again. Help us, Lord,
to open up our hearts and let the love of God keep refreshing us with new resources every day so we have the divine love inside of us to enable us to love one another as long as it is still day. Thank you, Father, because you will walk with us and you will help us even though when the going is tough, when the times is difficult, you are with us and your grace is enough for us. Your blessings and your peace and your love be upon your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.